should be ready for our trials in three or four days, Sir William. A week ahead of schedule. Very good going, Beatty. Very good going indeed. Well, I must say everybody's worked with a will. The men realize how immensely important the job is. Well, if she behaves in the open sea as she did in the test tank, it will be a very persuasive answer to the U-boat campaign. You made a wonderful job of disguising her. Huh? Oh, thank you, Sir William. Well, I'd like to bet a pound to a pink gin, the only German submarine commander, would mistake her for a harmless, cumbersome old drifter. Yes, I think the Hun would give the eyes of his entire intelligence service to lay his hands on the blueprint. Hmm. Well, naval intelligence have just reported that enemy agents would work here in Fort Hampton. For the moment, we're content to let them be. We don't want them mopped up until we've discovered a little bit more about their organization. Then we'll shake them up like the rats they are, won't we, old boy? Eh? <laughs> Why is this no way to speak to a customer? Come along, come over here. <laughs> I'm sorry, sir. He's such a good watchdog, and the shop is usually closed at this hour. Go on, go inside. I'm afraid as the years advance, I'm getting rather absent-minded, and it would seem I forgot to lock the door. But uh, since you are here, is there anything I can do for you? Yes. I was rather intrigued by that eagle. It's a very fine example of the taxidermist's start. And I was wondering if... I'm sorry, sir, but I'm afraid it's not for sale. You see... It was the work of my father. Who had the shop before you? So naturally you have a sentimental attachment for it. Well, naturally. However, if you care to step into my little room at the back, I can show you some excellent bird specimens, which you're welcome to examine at your leisure. Thanks, I should like to. This way, sir, if you please. Blackout time yet. There's an hour or so to go. <laughs> With this double summer time. But these things are better done while I think of them. Hmm? About um, how much were you thinking of spending? Oh, about 22 pounds. 22 pounds? Hmm. I think I might find you something interesting for that. Don't inquire your name, sir. Church. Your passport and identity card. <laughs> Perfect in every detail. How very thorough our people are. Spot, come here, sir. Give that to me. I'm sorry. You know, of course, why you've been sent here. Yes, to work with you. To work under me. Of course, under you. There's a subtle distinction. I understand Berlin is interested in the new submarine chase of the Firefly, which the British are building. Yes, she's the first of a new class. And my orders are to supply headquarters with all details of sailings so that she may be destroyed while on her trials. Her trials? Surely it'll be easier to bomb her while she's lying here in Port Hampton. We're not here to make suggestions. In any case, the loss of the designers and engineers is just as important, if not more so, than the destruction of the vessel herself. Such men are not easily replaced, and they'll all be aboard during the trials. But how can she possibly be sabotaged at sea? No one will be allowed on board her except a few. That point need not concern you, Mr. Church. Admiral Sir William Colton, who will conduct the trials, is returning to the Admiralty tonight, and before he comes back, your job is to find out when and where the trials will take place. Yes. But how do we get the information to Berlin? That also is no concern of yours. The ultimate outcome of the war for the Reich now rests almost entirely on the success of the U-boat campaign. The stupid Britisher thinks he'll defeat us again. But this time it is impossible. He cannot! You can't, uh. Just you wait, you twerp. I'll show you. Get down with you. It's dead easy. I never said it wasn't. My sister's youngest can do it, and he's only five. <laughs> you can't give a good man down. <laughs> but you can't do this without breaking your neck. Of course I can. Why should I? I bet you half a dollar you can't. Did you say half a dollar? I did. That's what I thought you said. Half a ground light. That's right. Uh, all right. Come on. Faster than that. Aye, I know, but I'm shaking my knees as well as me, and that's clever. Now, girl, it's better than you. Yes, I feel like a girl, a dizzy blonde. 
Costa! Yes, okay. Mother, somebody save me, I'm coming! Why don't you look where you're going instead of rushing across a main road, wagging your head like, like Charlie McCarthy, without even ringing your bell? This is too much to accept road sense from a cyclist. It was all your fault. I haven't got a chance to pull up. You, people like you, shouldn't be allowed out without an armed garden and a red flag. As for riding bicycles, naturally I shall be putting the maps to this. It's always the motorist who's blamed, never the poor suffering cyclist. I know. It's men like you that lose girls like me their jobs. I know. Don't you try and say it wasn't your fault. You wouldn't have a leg to stand on. I hope. I've got witnesses to prove that. I know, but you... I see a blithering idiot who's a danger to the community. Well, next time, pick in a steamroller and finish the job properly. I know, I know. I know, I know, I know, I know that if I was you, I'd tie the remains of that beastly bicycle around my neck and, and jump into the sea at no time. But, miss, you must listen. Do listen to me. I haven't nearly finished this. Is you this wait a private me. war, or may I join you? Sorry, sir. It's not my fault. It's this, this, this. This is this place. I have several things to do before catching that train, so there's no time for a postmortem. Unfortunately, he isn't dead. Aye, sir. Understand it. No one to blame but your own lunatic Kelly. Yes, I know, Miss. It was all my fault. You mean you admit it? Well, that's settled anyway. Now drive me to the senior service club as quickly as you can. Senior service club? That's where I work. Oh, well, we seem to have rammed and sunk your craft, so we'd better clear the wreckage from our bows and jump into the car. Oh, yes, sir. Thank you, sir. I, I really don't deserve it, sir, but thank you very, I very much. I couldn't agree with you more, but please jump to it. Yes, mister. <laughs> hey, you've got it. Thanks, Ellen. <laughs> Proper mad at me, wasn't she? Can you blame her? Oh, no, no. I'm old enough to know better, and I admit it. Of course, it was all done for a bet. Say, I want my brains examining, don't I? <laughs> nice bit of homework, isn't she? <laughs> Proper mate in the night, aren't they? But this is an admiralty car, isn't it? Yes, I'm down here on business. <laughs> That's the Navy all over. Nicest pie to one bloke and no thank you not today to the other. What do you mean? Well, you come down to sell them something or something and they send you home in a motor car. I go and offer myself as a sailor and they send me over my two flat feet. Three times I've had a shot at getting in and three times I've been shot out. <laughs> How's that? It's my heart, a bit groggy. Not much, mind you, but too much for them. Don't talk to me about medicals. Too much red braid and gold tape about them for my liking. My dad used to say the Navy would be grand if it wasn't for the knobs at the top. You know, the admirals and things. It takes brains and guts to become a chief petty officer. <laughs> Anybody can become an admiral. That's what my dad always said. I'm inclined to believe him, too. When all's said and done, if admirals were any use, they'd have more of them, wouldn't they? <sighs> That's what my dad always said. I shall only be a minute or two. I just want to speak to Commander Carter. Aye, sir. Well, I'm glad about what happened, but I wish it hadn't happened like it did happen. What are you trying to say? Well, happened... I, I, uh, I'm sorry I run into your car, but I'm glad I run into you, otherwise I shouldn't have met you. <laughs> now I've said it. Now you have. Just where do you think it's going to get you? <laughs> it's a bit early to tell, isn't it? <laughs> Well, that's the fourth time I've been turned down. Three times with the Navy and once with the Wrens. Boom. I understand. So everything's under control, Carter. Yes, sir. I think I can safely say we're at least to jump ahead of the Hun intelligence about Firefly. Good. In any case, how can they possibly send out any information they may be able to pick up when we're certain there's no unauthorized radio transmitter in this area? Well, maybe through some neutral country, sir. <laughs> Are there any left? <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye, sir. And to think that less than three years ago, I was a steward in this joint. Don't call this dumper joint. Well, upon my Sam, if it ain't me old China, George Blake. 
Well, bust me main brace if it isn't Jim Bennett. <laughs> what does it feel like to be middleweight champion of the Navy? It's well. <laughs> How are you, pal? Well, not as well as I was. You know, I never expected to find you still here. I ain't Mr. Bevin Rambledgee yet. Ah, oh, you know, I've been trying to get into the service ever since I was britched. Yes, but they won't take him, the lucky so-and-so. Lucky? You fix it so I can get in the Navy, you can have every quid I've got in the bank. Both of them. How long are you on for, Jim? Indefinite, mate. Indefinite. You see, it's like this. After two years at Scopper, their lordships, in recognition of my invaluable service, have seen fit to... What fit he to... means is he wanted to get back to little me, so he wangled it. That's right. I've been drafted to His Majesty's ship Seaworthy, what never floats. It being a short establishment, we see. A sort of barracks. I know, I know. You'll be telling me Julius Caesar's dead next. You know, that's the best bit of news I've heard since old Ned fell down the stairs and broke his leg. <laughs> Oh, sailor, turn it up. We heard all about your fight with Abel Seaman Collins, Jim. Fight? <laughs> it was murder, that's what it was. Cold-blooded murder. Yeah, but he's all right again now, isn't he? Him? <laughs> it was me that was nearly done for. Now, it's like this, see? It's in the eighth round. Now, Collins gets in a real smasher on me right temple, and out I goes. What, out for the count? No, no, my knees are sagging, see? And I'm almost on the deck when he brings in a right hook on me left temple, and that brings me round again before I've dropped, see? Though I'm groggy, mind you. Now, the M.O. says I was concussed from then on, and yet I won the fight. Now, what do you think of that now? I wouldn't know. You've blinded me with science. Concussed? What is that? Is it serious? Now, not on your life, sir. Now, look, even now, just a little tap here, and I'm out as clean as a whistle for maybe 24 hours. A lovely blackout. You mean you can't remember a thing? No, not a sausage. Not even to bash the other side of my face here and bring myself back alive. Well, what happens during these blackouts? <laughs> I don't know. But from what they tell me, some of the things I do ain't nobody's business. <laughs> you fancy. <laughs> well, the next time we do for a blackout, you'll have to give Sally the wire. <laughs> oh, there you are, Stuart. That's right, sir. Service with a smile, sir. Well, personally, I'd rather have a little more service and a great deal less smile. Now, see if you can get this right for once. That's three large whiskies, a bottle of beer, a double gin, and a brandy for the gentleman in the corner. Very good, sir. And do you think you can remember all that? Oh, standing on my ear. Well, repeat it. Uh, two whiskies, a large beer... Uh, no, oh, yes, a bottle of brandy for the gentleman with the double chin in the corner. <laughs> oh, sure. Yes, Take this prescription to the barman and bring back what he gives you. Well, isn't that what I said? <laughs> Not that it makes any difference. With no spirits left, it'll have to be six wallops. Then why the devil did you tell me that while I was giving the order? Well, there's no harm in wishful drinking. I mean, thinking, sir. I need six wallops. Hi, George, come here. What's up? I want you to try and persuade this overdeveloped gorilla to come to a party my dad's throwing tonight at the public house after closing time. But will he come? Will he jiggery? He's come all over conscientious. Duty calls, if you please. But I keep telling you, Sal, I've got to be at Seaworthy before 11 tonight. A shame on you, Sally Rayner, for even suggesting that Jim should shirk his duty for a party at your dad's smelly old club. Yes, Sal, George is right. For a sailor, duty comes first. What, before beer? Before beer. Free beer? It'll flow like water. <laughs> oh, I. Well, from what I know of your dad's pub, that's what it'll be, water. George Blake, there's no need to... As many pints as you can hold and more. Duty comes before anything. Anything's a big word. It covers a whale of a lot of ground. <laughs> You're upsetting me. Of course, if I, if I could think something up to account for being late, it... It might only mean having me pay doc for a couple of days. Oh, then you'll come? But supposing the crushers caught me out after 11, what, one peep at my liberty ticket and I'm sunk with all ends. Well, why not come in civvies? Because I ain't got any civvies, that's why not. Oh, Ooh, what about... Sell my gal full marks for that. Shh. See you in a tanner, one Jimmy or Goblin. Thank you. Hey, George, uh, do you mind if I slip into your room for a minute and push myself up a bit before joining my new ship? Push up? <laughs> of course you can, but don't strain yourself. Remember, Wigan Pier wasn't built in a day. <laughs> Thanks, mate. <coughs> what did he mean by that? Come on, put a jerk in it. Yeah, thinks he's funny, eh? All right, well, the laugh's going to be on him, see? I'll call back for the train in the morning, so I'm just going to do the blackout. All right. Look out there! What the devil do you think you're doing?
you're playing at. Must you do that? It did it itself, sir. I'm very sorry. I'm a bit clumsy, sir. Steward, I seem to remember you're telling me that you wanted to join the Navy. Yes, sir. Well, take my advice and don't. You'd make a rotten sailor. Oh. Now, go and bring us another six half cans of beer and send in somebody else who can do the blackout properly. A rotten sailor, would I? Talk to me like that. Me who's got the sea in the blood. The salt sea, the real sea, not the south end stuff. And don't talk to yourself, man. It's the first sign of lunacy. I wasn't talking to myself, I was thinking to myself. No law against that. I'll think to myself if I want to. It's a free country. Take more than you to stop me thinking what I think about you. Another six beers, Harry. I've upset the last lot. You've upset them? Was your dad a chief petty officer? Go on, tell me. Of course he wasn't. Well, my dad was, and he wasn't a rotten sailor either. And you can... Anything wrong, chum? You look proper upset. I'm so mad I'm afraid of my own company. Why, what's the matter? There's an officer in there, a Lieutenant Blooming Commander Carter, thinks I'd be a rotten sailor. There, now you don't Me, George say. Blake, whose family served in the Navy since Noah was a cabin boy. Ooh, I'll tell him some when I go in there. Says you. Says me. You don't believe me, I want to bet on it. Why, sure. A bob you don't say a word to him. Put your money down. I'm there and back before I've started. Thanks, George. Now you'd better get off and change your tubs. I'll fill up the drinks and take them in. We don't want the club to go bankrupt. I calls it an act of providence. Providence may thought it was your blooming soap. Now there's no need to turn nasty. I tell you it was providence. You just weren't meant to go into that room, George. Oh, wasn't I? Well, we'll see about that. I'm going in there right now, just as I am. Want to have another bob on it? Nay, I don't bet on certs. They've all gone. Here, give me them things. I'll take them down to the boiler room to get dried. I'd get to bed if I was you. Good night. What's this? Must be Jim's. It's not enough turning my room into a wash and brush up joint. Must have make it into a cloakroom as well. I'm fed up with this place. I'll bet you are too, Egbert, aren't you? Swimming round day in, day out. Always coming back to where you started from. Still, you know, one day you and I will get our wish. See the world. Be champion, won't it? You know, once upon a time, there was a little fish. And he lived in a long, long stream. And to make his way to the great wide world was this little fish's dream. But a wise old trout who'd been about advised him what to do. He said fish's wishes won't come true. If they dream the whole day through So swim, little fish, swim on Swim, little fish, swim on We're two ambitious fishes, you and I We'll get our wishes if we try, try, try Swim, little fish, swim on Swim, little fish, swim on Blow little bubbles all the long day through Show little troubles that they can't stop you For everything worthwhile in life is hard to get, my friend So don't give up and don't give in It's worthwhile in the end Swim, little fish, swim on Swim, little fish, swim on Swim, little fella, till your dreams come true you meet the very little fish for you you can be happy if you swim, 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 little fish, swim on. Swim, little fish, swim on. Swim, little fish, swim on. If you are weary at the river mouth, ask for a lift upon the next wave south. Swim, little fish, swim on. Swim, little fish, swim on. Be very careful and you'll find it pays. Mind how you cross the gulf and look both ways. A chap can get a good square meal and all that he can wish. The wise fish goes to smoke, he rolls a good pull in for fish. Swim, little fish, swim on. Swim, little fish, swim on. All we 
always remember mother's good advice. Steer clear of fishes who are not quite nice. Do nothing fishy, fishy, swim, 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 swim. little fish, swim on. Good night. <laughs> in my suit, that dirty tiger. That is a little do. Come on, hurry up. Anyone else? Yes, there's your Craig in the last room. You there, hurry up. What's the matter with these? Why can't they have proper pumps in the Navy? It's better. Hippie! Oh, all right, Dick. Come on, Egbert, abandon ship. Who's down there? My little egg, but my little goldfish is such a delicate little fella. Oh, too late to worry about your egg, but now. This yours? No, but I was wearing it. There you are, then. On your way, chap. So it's so it's so I closes with him, see, and it's bang, 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 three, right on the body. Hey, break it up there. That's what the ref says. So I started again. Hey, my suit. What, another one? Can't you see we're busy? Just a minute, Mrs. I've come to say to this. Shut girl. up. Don't interrupt. What are you so, going to say for so, yourself? So, so then I steps back and gives old Collins everything I got, see, which is considerable. That's so nothing I, to what you're going to get from me in a minute. And me? And, and bloody O'Reilly, he comes up as fresh as paint and wang. Yes, I'll bet he had cause to. Wait, listen, look. And, and then he gives me a real smasher right on my right temple. What, like this? <laughs> Advantage of him. What? Hey, come here, come here, Jim. Where are you going? You're a fine fella pinching me suit, a proper mess you've got me into. You're a disgrace to the uniform I'm wearing. Hey, Jim, don't pass out to me. I want my suit. Jim, Jim, speak to me. It's me, George. Don't you know me? I know I don't look like me, but who's fault's that? Jim. By gum, that sailor must have conked you in the wrong spot. Now, what did you say? If you get it on the right temple, it's wrong because you go out for 24 hours. But if you get it on the left hand, so that's right, it brings you back again. Sorry, Jim, old pal, but you've got to have it. It's a shame. Ah, oh, no, you don't. Been fighting, eh? What are you doing here at this time of night? Got your liberty ticket? No, lad, you, you've got me all wrong. I mean, I mean, sirs, see that chap down there? We do. And we saw you lay him out. Mm, what a whopping. I, I never touched him. I was just starting to bring him round when, when you two... Go uh, on. Now, I'll mm. tell one. No, I know it sounds daft, but he shouldn't be in service. He should be in uniform. Where's your paybook? Paper? You, you don't understand it. It's him you want in the Navy, not me. But we do understand. And it's you we want. Shut up! What's the matter with this paybook? It's all wet and stuck together. Well, it, it was knocked off my horse by a head and it fell in the water with Egbert. Well, can I go now? Not likely you can't. Hey, 
very casual take. No, miss, he's had a skin fooled by the look of him. It looks as if he's been knocked out. That's right, miss, if he gets on right on the right spot, he goes wrong. Oh, no, you don't. I've seen a few drunks in my time, but you're the daddy of the lot. According to this draft note, you should have reported at 2300 hours last night. It's now 0128 hours. It's, well, it's too late to report anywhere now, isn't it? I think I'd better go on. Good night. Hurry, just right. a minute, here. Right. Well, where are you taking me to? Seaworthy, that's where. What's going to happen to him? We're taking him to hospital right now. You're making a bigger mistake than Hitler did when he invaded Russia. No. You can't take him. I mean, you what must take him. What routine would you suggest? The drunk. Come on. Heading up to black and white with one customer. Right. Sober, I'm sober as a judge. Judge of what, Ops? Now, look, I only asked you what had happened to me if I was a civilian in sailor's uniform and I was found out. A quick trial. A quick execution. A quick impress. A quick burial. In quick line. Quick, catch me. Uh. Posted here from Scarpa. Should have reported at 2300 last night. You haven't made a very good start at Port Hampton, have you, Bennett? No, sir. Well, what have you got to say? Nothing. Surely you must have some excuse. I can tell you, sir. All right, uh, Beck. Um, let him tell me himself. Uh, there was an air raid last night, wasn't there? Y yes, there was an owl. And you got caught in it, didn't you? I, I got proper caught in it, yes. A victim of circumstances. The, the victim of a proper blackguard. You see, there was an unexploded bomb and, and I... And so you had to make a long detour. <laughs> yes, that's right, sir. You see, th there was the water and I went round... Obviously. I can see that from your unseamanlike appearance. All right. Unavoidably detained by enemy action. All right, I don't think we need to go further into the case. Carry on. Aye, aye, sir. <laughs> you better turn in and sleep it off before you get in any more trouble. Report to leading seaman Edwards B mess at once. B mess, and where will I find that, sir? Follow the railway lines as far as the coal wagon, then go nor nor west for two hundred yards. Let me see now, nor nor west. That'll be round that way, won't it? I don't expect to have to tell even a bottle of metal over the compass points. You know your stars, don't you? Stars? Of course I do. Yes, stars. There's a big bear and little bear and mother bear and Goldilocks. Now, there's none of that. Go on, get going. Aye, aye, sir. And don't forget, be mess. Be mess. Blimey, I'm already in it. Stars, there's millions of them. Why couldn't you have said the moon? I know. I'll follow that one. That door's open. Who the Sam Hill's that? Me. Who's me? Why, you are, of course. Oh, trying to be funny, eh? What's your name? Blake. Blake, eh? I'll remember that. No, I've, I'd rather you didn't. I made, I made a mistake. My name's Bennett. Bennett? Yes. Where am I? In B, miss. 
Take my advice and get out while the going's good. I can't. The officer sent me and said I'd just sleep here. Just, just a minute, I'll, I'll get me things. Dear fellows, you will have gathered from your reception that the gentleman of B-Mess, of which yours truly, leading Seedman Edwards, known as Birdie, happens to be in charge, do not take kindly to bottle matelows who arrive in the middle of the night and disturb their well-earned slumbers, thereby sabotaging their war effort. But, uh, I didn't quite catch the first part. Come here, Mr. Blake Bennett. Somebody's forgot to black out the canary. It wasn't a canary, it was me. Go on. Mother Nature has seen fit to endow me with the gift of imitating the fowls of the air. My gum, isn't nature wonderful? Do what you can. When I whistles like a canary, do you know what it means? Yeah, you want some bird seed. <laughs> it means my patience is exhausted. Now I'm giving you two minutes to get into your hammock. Two minutes, do you understand? Hammocks, hammocks. How much? But, but they're all full. Use this one. It's a bit high for me. Get in it. <laughs> Strikes me as a ruddy performing seal. <laughs> I'll see if you can break your neck. Champion. I'm ever so comfortable now. Yeah. Now, you lie there and stay still till tomorrow morning. Do you understand? <laughs> That's easy. That's just as easy as falling off top of a house. Yeah, I bet you a dollar you'll be out in your ear before cock crow. A dollar? Now you're talking. You're on. Oh, 
Nuttlow I've ever met or know error. Where are you from? Nuttlow. I might have guessed it. Your last ship. Your last ship. Scarper. Scarper? Yes. And what kind of craft is she? What's this? Well, it's... Uh... I used to be sort of uh, un unofficial entertainer to the lads. Entertainer? Blimey, poor beggars. Well, let me tell you something. You don't entertain me in the slightest. What did you do? I used to play this and sing. Hi, lads. Here's a bloke here says he's an entertainer. Let's have a basin full. Fair. Ever since the days of all the navies rule the waves. For years they've told the world that Britain never shall be slaves. The Navy still remembers and you'll often hear them say What Nelson told Napoleon upon Trafalgar Day It serves you right, you shouldn't have joined it, jolly well serves you right It serves you right, you shouldn't have joined, you might have been sitting tight You might have been in Sydney Street instead of in the fight It serves you right, you shouldn't have joined it, jolly well serves you right And it's no use kicking up around Because you're nobody's sweetheart now Try and pipe your eye, but still you're in the fight. It serves you right, you shouldn't have joined. It jolly well serves you right. I wouldn't mind the Navy if the blinking ship was still. It's all this bobbing up and down that makes me feel so ill. The sea's all right for sharks and whales and things the like of that. Hey, but I'd rather stick me marlin pike in ill claim or bat hat. It serves me right, I shouldn't have joined. It jolly well serves me right. It serves me right, I shouldn't have joined. I might have been sitting tight. When I was cleaning windows, I would keep them nice and bright But now I'm polishing portals Rubbing them up with all my might And it's no use kicking up around Because I'm nobody's sweetheart now One day up in the crow's nest I was feeling bright and gay Till the captain shouted Don't come down, we're taking the ship away I used to be a chimney sweep In dear old Wigan town I used to do the ladies down the street For half a crown but now I don't get nothing for the little jobs I do. I wish I was in Wigan sweeping Mrs. Jones's flue. It serves me right, I shouldn't have joined. It jolly well serves me right. It serves me right, I shouldn't have joined. I might have been sitting tight. I thought in every port I'd get a cuddle every night. But all I've done is cuddle a gun and work up an appetite. And it's no use kicking up around. Because I'm nobody's sweetheart now. There's a draft around me four and half me jump as much too tight. I've got barnacles on me binnacle and it jolly well serves me right. <laughs> Name. I don't know, sir. Don't know whether it's Blake or Bennett. He's just been posted here from Scarpa. What is your name? B B B B B Bennett. Mm, I can use you in the broadcast. He'd be good, sir, wouldn't he? Mm. Mr. Barnes is going to put you in Spick and Span. Spick and Span? Well, what's that? Some of that lease and lend grub? <laughs> <laughs> Surely you've heard of the weekly wireless programmes made up of performers drawn from the Navy? Well, a party from this establishment will be in the next one, including yours truly. What? Do you mean he wants me to go on the wireless? Yes. You're good. Oh, but... But when? You'll get your order sometime tomorrow. But tomorrow? Yeah, you're certainly a rum metal, but as an entertainer, you're worth a week's rum ration. Oh, well, in, in that case, can I have the day off to do a bit of practice? The day off? Yes, please. To practice? Yes, please. You'll get sure leave at 16.30 hours, the same as everybody else. In the meantime, jump to it! Hi, you! 
Give me the boat for Bodley. Wait for me. No one else in the Skylark. Go on, shove off. Never mind. There's others in the Navy besides you, mate. Fancy, uh, I'm pleased to see you. Then why did you run away from me? Well, I was, uh, 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 exercise doctor's orders. I didn't know it was you. I to the senior service club. Well, uh, really, I do, and I don't. I'm, um, uh, I'm on, I'm on my holidays, uh, CA, doctor's, doctor's orders. orders. Since when have you been a naval rating? I'm not a rating. Then why are you wearing that uniform? Well, I'll explain. You will, to the naval authorities at Buckley. All right, you win. But will you do me one little favour? What is it? If I give you my mother's address, will you explain to her it was all Jim Bennett's fault? Who's he? The fellow that owns these togs. Oh, look, you better tell me the whole story, but don't think you can talk me out of handing you over at Buckley. Oh, I wouldn't want you not to. You've got your duty to do it. What have I said? Well, you know when you saw me going to the club last night? and popped into quicklime. I'm black and blue from head to foot, from falling into things and out of things and over things. And it was all Jim's Bennett's fault. Crossed me out and hope I dropped down dead if it isn't true. Can you prove it? Well, Jim Bennett could bear me out when he comes to his senses, if he has any to come to. It's rather a personal question, but surely you had another suit you could have worn. I've got three. One Jim Bennett's wearing, one away at the cleaners, and one at home that my mother's cutting down for my little brother. And he gets all my coupons, too. Here we are, Botley. Get ready, all of you. We're coming back with you. I'm going to the hospital with you. Oh, what? Aren't you turning me over? I want to give you a chance to prove your fantastic story. Oh, thanks, Miss Akadogi, for that. But you might throw me overboard, and I don't want to shrink Jim's suit, do I? <laughs> or do I? This is the patient we haven't been able to identify yet. Is that your friend? My... Well, it's Jim Bennett. Looks proper poorly, doesn't he? Nurse, write down the patient's name in the record card, will you? James Bennett. Aye, aye, sir. He's coming round. Ah! You know, you ought to have that rug fixed. Somebody'll be falling and breaking a leg, then they'll have to go to hospital. I'll get the doctor. You keep an eye on him, nurse. Where am I? In hospital. You're doing fine. You ought to be doing time. Look here, you. I think you'd better go now. No, I can't go now because it sounded it's... like George Blake's voice. It is, you. You, you. You in the service? Where's my suit? Now, don't get on, you can't remember. You must go. You're yeah, exciting no, the patient. Wait, wait, exciting wait. him. That's nothing to what I'd like to do to him. Wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. I, I know it, it's all coming back. I borrowed your suit. That's right, yeah. <laughs> a nice suit it was, too. A, a bit short round the back, though, but... How long have I been here? Almost a whole day. What a day? And what a day. Now, then, be a good boy and lie down. I've got to get out of here. I've got a report. Oh, that's a report, nurse. You do what I said. He's only just regained consciousness. You can't give a man in hospital if he wants to get there. It's against the law. The doctor will decide that. Come on, Jim. You're all right now. Come on with us. Come on. Will you kindly take the hands of my patient? Patient? I'm not a patient. I'm a boxer. That's right, Jim. You're a boxer. Come on, Jim. Listen to the door, Jim. Come on. Oh. Come along, please. Have, uh, have you got his suit, sir? Why, of course. Well, I'd like to have it pressed for him. He's very fussy about his appearance, and and could I take it with me? I'm afraid that's quite impossible. It's been fumigated. Fumigated? Well, well it's my suit. He borrowed it from me. Well, you better take that up with him when he's been discharged. Well, I believe you. Thanks. Well, other clothes must be dry by now. You'd better go back to the club. Yes, maybe I had. But I can't. It'll all be roped off because of the bum. Well, what are you going to do? Well, perhaps I can slip in tonight after it gets dark. You can't wander about till then. You might be picked up by the crushers again. Yes. I've got it. Come on. Well, here we are. But we can't go in there. Of course we can. This is the last place the crushers will think of looking for us. It's too posh. The... The... What's in it? Jim Bennett. I, I mean, George Blake. <laughs> George. It sounds nice when you say it. Well, now we've settled that. I come with you on one condition, that we go Dutch. Come 
Do you so? Well, if you can see more than two, you've had a couple. <laughs> What about some braised lamb and peas? I'm sorry, sir. The lamb's off. Oh, thanks for the tip. Lamb's a bit high. No, sir. I mean there's none left. Oh, you mean it's off? I thought you said it was off. <laughs> Bring us anything you think best, will you? We'll leave it to you. We'll have a bit of everything twice, do you see? Certainly, sir. Hey, come back, you! Yes, sir. No, sir. Not you, sir. That dog over there. My cat! And up with two shakes of a dog's rudder. Oh, make call! Yes, sir, come. For you? Yes, there is. You can get my girl's cat back for me. At the double, triple, and faster than that, she's out of the What makes you think that I can help you find your young lady's headgear? I'm a taxidermist, not a hatter. I'll be as mad as a hatter in a minute, and I don't want a taxi. You've got a dog, haven't you? Oh, so Spot spirit his tricks again, has he? Spot, Spot, such a high-spirited little fellow. Spot, Spot, come here, sir. Come here, I say. Come on. Good dog. Give it to me. There we are. And none the worse, I hope. You're a naughty little dog. A very naughty little dog. Yes, you are a naughty little dog. In fact, you're a naughty little geezer. You seem to think that HMS on a cat means help yourself, don't you? <laughs> Here you are. What's that? What's what? You know that. It's a cricket in the cellar. My basement swarms with them, horrible creatures. And so monotonous. <laughs> and keeping you from your young lady. One doesn't like to interrupt naval manoeuvres in wartime, does one? <laughs> little tinker, aren't you? As a matter of fact, I'm about to engage one of the smartest little crafts you've ever seen. Her name's Pat. Nice, isn't it? Oh, charming, charming. <laughs> you said it. Well, so long, Dad. And watch those crickets. They can be very spiteful. <laughs> Arrested? There was somebody in the shop just now and he heard you testing. Fortunately, it was only a stupid young sailor, but he might well, have been... how on earth did he get into the shop anyway? How? Through the door, of course. Well, why wasn't the door locked? Go on, you might as well admit you forgot it. You've been acting the stupid old Josser for so long that you're beginning to get that way. Well, in future, don't touch that instrument without letting me know first. Okay, you're the boss. Is it in proper working order? Yes, my signal was just answered. Good. I do. After I've serviced my car tomorrow morning, I'll go and see Commander Henshaw. He's a great friend of my uncle. I'll tell him the whole story. You're a proper brick, aren't you, Pat? I must not drop you, though. Not that I'd want to. <laughs> Shall we dance? Well, I was just going to ask you the same thing, I think. But, uh... But what? Well, I haven't had my six lessons from Madame Lazonga yet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I haven't been listening to Victor Sylvester on the air lately, either. So we can dance on each other's feet with impunity. <laughs> You know, this is champion. It's just like floating on a cloud. <laughs> Sorry. My fault. Do you mean dancing with me? Well, of course, if, if I wasn't me, I expect I'd come right out with it. With what? Well, if, if I was somebody else and not so shy, I'd be as bold as brass and tell you I was falling head over heels in love with you. Would you? Well, I won't. Funny side of fellow, aren't I? <laughs> yes, you are, rather. If I wasn't me, but a different sort of chap, what a Romeo I'd be. I'd be able to see, <laughs> it's an awful handicap, when a guy's as shy as me. What happiness might come my way, if I could just speak up and say, I'll bet I could work wonders. 
things too good to be true I could be a bee marvel If I had a girl like you Single-handed I'd rescue Ship and captain and crew I'd be number one hero If I had a girl like you I'd spend my leisure Finding hidden treasure No one could measure The things that I'd do In the stormiest weather I could eat a tripe stew I'd become a real sailor If I had a girl like you I could do without moonlight And give the stars a rest too I'd be warm in a snowstorm If I had a girl like you All the radio programs Would be strictly taboo They could keep their whole brains trust If I had a girl like you I'd never long for Meals they ring a gong for The shows they throng for I never would view I'm telling you I'd have pennies from heaven I could live in a shoe They could take me close coupons If I had a girl like you Thank you, George. What, uh, what do you do? As a Ren driver, I mean. Oh, this and that. Mostly fetching, carrying brass hats. For instance, tomorrow I've got to pick up. My goodness, look at the time. Nearly half past ten. I've got to be in a quarter to eleven. Oh, I'm a I'll have to get the bill then. Waiter. Your bill, sir? Yes, I've got it ready. I thought you'd be leaving about now. Keep the change. Thank you very much, sir. Good night, miss. Good night, sir. Good night. Good night. I insist on paying my own share. No, I'm going to be firm. Well, you shouldn't have taken me there, but I loved it. It was fun. Well, I expect all fun and games must come to an end sometimes. <laughs> About that. I think the French is so much nicer. Au revoir. You mean? Oh, but you couldn't. I'll bet you wouldn't like to come to the pictures one night with a civilian. A civilian whose heart's in the Navy? How could I refuse? Saturday? It's a date. <laughs> I can hardly wait. <laughs> Good night, Patton. Watch your step and... Don't speak to any strange math, love. I won't. Good night, George. Good night. And trust me, I'll soon be in the Navy fair and square. I will and all. In your own uniform. <laughs> in my own uniform. Wild horses couldn't drag me back in any other. So it's you, is it? Uh, yes, please. Um, no, thank you. Not tonight. Getting to be quite a regular customer, aren't you? Why not register with us and have done with it? Well, I haven't done anything wrong. I'm allowed out till quarter to eleven. It's now sixteen minutes to. And you've one minute to go. Oh, well, in that case, I'd better be going. <laughs> Good night. Uh, glad to see you. Hey, it so happens we're going the same way as you. And we'd be company for you. Yeah, but oh, what a pity your fathers and mothers had to meet. Hello. I thought you promised me last night you'd go straight back to the senior service cut and get out of that uniform. Yes, I know. I'm not interested, but I'm sure Commander Henshaw will be. Uh, Pat! Pat! Please, Pat, it wasn't my fault. It never is. Once a sucker, twice shy. But, Pat, you must believe me. I'd no sooner left you last night and those two crushes collared all of me and bunged me back in here before I could say Jack Robinson. What were you doing in Commander Henshaw's office? Well, you told me you were seeing him after breakfast and I wanted to be there when you came in, so I fixed it with Birdie Edwards to let me polish the floor. You must get away from here at once. Well, what do you think I've been trying to do? Then you do believe me? I don't know what to believe. All I do know is if you don't get out of here, I'll go crackers trying to figure out if you're telling the truth or not. Well, I'm going to get past the police at the gate at this time of day. I'm still a fake. You don't like fakes, but crikey, they hate them. 
I can fix it. Wait here a minute. Oh, there you are, Bennett. I've been looking for you all over the ship. Uh, didn't you find me, sir? I, I mean, have you, sir? Of course, it's awkward picking me up. We all look alike in uniform. You can't tell one from the other. We're like peas in a pod and birds of a feather. <laughs> well, save your comedy for the stick and span party. It's ready to go ashore. You better cut along and join them over there. Um, but I can't go up to London in these togs, especially to the BBC with all them posh announcers and Freddie Grisewood and the radio doctor. And, uh, Why, what's up, Bennett? You got stage fright? <laughs> no, no, stage... No, no, but I haven't got my uke. Well, leading Seaman Edwards has it with the other instruments. He would. And you too, young lady. The Spick and Span party's waiting. We mustn't miss the train. Time, tide, and the southern railway wait for no man. Now what? I forgot to tell you I was picked for this Spick and Span thing yesterday morning. You in it too? Yes, I'm going to sing, but you can't come. If Bennett recovers during the day, you're going to be for it good and strong. Yeah. They'll never believe you if you're still impersonating him. A quick trial, a quick execution. Yeah, quick... take this pass. It'll get you past the piece of the gate. Only take it and go. Oh, thanks, miss. I mean, Pat, I'm ever so great. We'll oh. take it and say it only hurry. All right, hurry. I'm already gone. Cross your fingers. Keep your thumbs up. And... and the next time you do it... Don't do it again. We'll forget that you tried to get us a slip. Only because we don't want the Navy to be one turn short on the broadcast. And you better be good, number 1876503. 1,876,503 of us to pick on me. You want a bit? Yes. I thought you might be interested to learn that a member of my organization, number 18, has succeeded where you and Church failed in obtaining the information I require. How? He asked himself a question. Who was building the Firefly's engines? He found out. And for some weeks now, he's been a valuable addition to the clerical staff of the works in question. When does the balloon go up? I don't know yet. Number 18 can't risk telephoning the shop. And the post may lose us valuable time. So he's sending the information in code by hand. Study this photograph carefully. It's that of number 57, the messenger. Not bad. You're going to London today. To meet her? Mm-hmm. You wear the uniform of an ordinary seaman. Travelling to and from a naval base, you're less likely to attract attention as a sailor. I shall give you a liberty ticket, paybook, etc., made out in the name of um, Henry Shapley. Henry Shapley, yes? You'll return to Port Hampton tonight by the 9.42 from Waterloo. As soon as the train pulls into the platform, you'll occupy a corner seat in a third-class non-smoking compartment about halfway up the train. You'll carry with you a copy of the Evening Standard which you will place on the seat beside you. Do you follow me? Perfectly. Number 57 will ask you, excuse me, but is that seat taken by any chance? And you'll reply, I was keeping it for my girl, but she hasn't turned up. Have you got that? Sure. Right. She'll then sit down beside you. On no account are you to get into conversation with her. But before Guildford, she'll go out into the corridor for a smoke. After a moment, you'll follow her, and in the corridor, she'll slip an envelope into your jumper. On your arrival at Port Hampton, you will bring that envelope to me immediately. Child's play. Mm. I've told you always to knock before entering. Well, there's a policeman in the shop wants to see you. A policeman? Yes, he wants you to stuff a parrot for him. Oh. Delighted to stuff anything for a policeman. Well, thank you. And now, um, what about a hen? Don't come to 212. Don't come to 212. Oh, don't come to 212. What's that? You frightened of getting yourself? No, but with the excitement, I forgot about Jim. Jim? And I'm willing him to keep unconscious till we get back tonight. Oh, Jim, don't come to 212. You can't. You shan't. You mustn't. Can you hear me? Are your ears burning? I hope they're not because they are. They may wake him up. And now, to wind up this week's Pick and Stand program, here is ordinary seaman Jim Bennett. Uh, Jim is going to sing a song entitled Bell Bottom George. Accompanying himself on the ukulele. So it's Bell Bottom George by Bell Bottom Jim. Incidentally, in addition to his musical accomplishments, uh, Jim Bennett is one of the finest boxers in the home fleet. It's me he's talking about. Really? Well, well, well. He should have said I'm one of the finest middleweight boxers in the home fleet. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I should have said that Jim is one of the finest middleweight boxers in the home fleet. Now you go back to sleep. And who's your next fight with, Jim? Uh, I don't know yet, sir. Well, I don't know yet, really. I'm still on the sickness, like. George Blake! But I'll soon be spick and span again. <laughs> when I finish with you, you'll be sick and sorry. And when I've done a bit of training... You'll get a bit of this! I'll be okay to give the KO to anybody, provided the other fellow doesn't run me one right in the right spot first. <laughs> you'll go through the ropes on your blinking neck! <laughs> I 
I can guess that some of you are wondering at my navy blue or how I came to be, oh, a sailor on the sea. You may think that I'm too daft to know what's forward or which is aft, but when I've sung my song, oh, you'll all agree you're wrong. A happy-go-lucky A.V. on the land or the sea. I know a few nautical games and my name's Bellbottom George. A girl in each port may be true of the boys dressed in blue. A sailor I know has got three and it's me, Bellbottom George. It's the same to me if we sail to Tripoli or we go back home to Dover. I can go ashore and have one or two more till I'm feeling half seas over. Adventures I've had by the score, what a life, what a war. If ever you get in a scrap, I'm your chap, Bellbottom George. George. There isn't a champ in the fleet Doesn't shout when we meet What have you been up to today On your way, bell-bottom George When Commodore's chat in the mess What's the drip, can't you guess Oh, George has been at it again What a brain, bell-bottom George At the Admiralty When they have a jug of tea They discuss my wild career And the first sea lord says that how I got aboard Well, he's really no idea So if I'm in blue by a fluke Say to me and my you The Navy would like you to stay You're okay, bell-bottom George When others are up to the next Pulling ropes and scrubbing decks Who slips on the soap and goes whizz Down on his bell-bottom jaw Kitten see left for me, bell bottom jaw. From ordinary seaman Jim Bennett, we bring to a close our 53rd Speak and Span program. Hey, Pat, what happened? We shall be with you again at the same time next week. So, till then, goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. Well, that's that. Well, congratulations, everybody. You all did even better than I expected. Thank you, sir. Well, you're now free to do as you like until the train leaves at 9.42. But mind you get to Waterloo in good time to catch it. Aye, aye, sir. Thank you very much. Oh, not at all. Well, I suppose I'd better be going. I promised to go and see my Uncle Bob whilst I was in town. Oh, so Bob's your uncle, eh? <laughs> he's also my guardian, too. Your guardian, too? Well, tell him from me he's going to be out of a job soon when I... I will. By the way, you might keep me a seat on the train. I'm afraid I may have to cut it a bit fine. You shall have the best seat in the Southern Railway, and I'll have the next one to it. I hope I won't have to pull the communication cord. <laughs> I'll cut that before you come in. Well, you can leave it there, Bennett. We collect all the instruments afterwards. Yes, sir. Hey, you've got them and all, eh? <laughs> There's a shop in Porthampton swarmed with them. Uh, what? <laughs> there they go again. Proper plague of them about this year, isn't there? Plague? Plague of what? Crickets. Crickets? <laughs> I'm afraid I don't quite... Um, uh, uh... <laughs> Lively, aren't they? <laughs> are they? Oh, <laughs> oh yes, yes, they are. Because <laughs> that's what I don't like about them. Too noisy. 
That's not cricket. Not cricket? Then what have we been talking about? I wouldn't know. You started it. No, I did not. Oh, yes, I did. Well, then, what is it? It is a record of the noise made by a wireless transmitter. We're using it in a radio play. Wireless transmitter? Yes. Gee. Well, does a real one sound like that, too? Well, of course. In the play, enemy agents are using it to send information to Germany. Quite fantastic, of course. But good theatre. In the end, their efforts are frustrated by the hero, naturally. Well, thanks. Wireless transmitter. Sending messages to Germany. Oh. That old buzzard in the shop. Well, that's what he was up to, was it? Crickets. He must have thought me daft to swallow that one. Fancy him being a spy. Hmm. Makes you think. Can't trust anybody. Never know when you're going to come bumping up against a spy. Sorry, miss, this seat's reserved. Come on, boys, hurry up. Come to it. Come along. Get to the van. Oh, yeah. Quick, my car. Oh, yeah. This boy's over. Sir, before I've got to catch that train. And you'll catch it if you don't, eh, miss? Better come in here, Miss Hilton. The whole train's crowded. Up today. Thanks, Bertie. Uh, Never thought I'd make it. George. Who's George? Oh, I, I mean Jim Bennett. I'm thinking of the song. Oh, I haven't seen him since the broadcast. I expect he's on the train somewhere. I'll go and have a look at him. Excuse me, but is there a seat there? Well, I was keeping it for somebody. They must have missed the train. taken by any chance? Well, I was keeping it for my girl, but she hasn't turned up. If you... No thanks, it's a non-smoker. Oh, we'll soon order that. It's all right, Miss. We ain't fussy, and this is a smoker now. Very tasty, very sweet. Eh, hey, Jack? What, do you mean to say you never noticed her? Why, she was sitting right next to you all the time. His mind was far away with all them here wives he has and them foreign ports. You sailors, all blinking Mormons. <laughs> we are not. I was wondering about my girlfriend. She should have been along with us on the train. Oh, hard cheese, old man. I say, um, what's she like? Well, she's a wren. <laughs> she's pretty. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait a minute. I saw a wren hopping into the back of the train as we were taxing out of Waterloo. Was she cute and... You know? Yes, that's her to the life. Slim undercarriage, just like a spit. <laughs> it must be Pat. I, I think I'll go and have a look. <laughs> and if it is her, old man, bring her back in here and we'll have some combined ops. Hey, oh, chaps? <laughs> Are you kidding? <laughs> Beg your pardon. Sorry, I was always a clumsy lad. Very clever, thanks. Well, there you are, you old penguin. What's the idea of breaking away from the convoy? As a matter of fact, with one thing and another, I've got a lot on my mind. Yes, well, you might as well have it on your knee and done with it. Come on. Hello. Hello. Thanks awfully for finding him, Birdie. I'm sorry I was late. I almost missed the train. Oh, that's all right. I was beginning to wonder if I'd ever see you again. I've got something to tell you. Ah, yes. oh, what it is to be young. What's that? A wren, my dear. <laughs> well, you go and whistle for one of your own. Uh -oh. This one's engaged. Well? 
You know Johnson's, the stuffed bird shop in Dignall Street? Yeah. Well, they've got a wireless transmitter in there. A man at the BBC told me. A man at the BBC? Well, how does he know? He doesn't know. I found it out all by myself. They use it for sending messages to Germany with. Oh, George, spy stuff. I know it sounds like a double blood and thunder, but I heard it when I was in there last night. Although I didn't know what it was then. Sure it couldn't be something else? I'm sure my name's Jim Bennett. I mean, George Blake. That shop's the headquarters of a gang of Jerry spies. I'll bet you what you like. Oh, you've been to too many flicks. I know I'm right. If I could only catch him single-handed by myself in a group, I'm certain I'd be accepted in the Navy on the level. Sea level. Dear Black I was as early as this. It's only about 10.40 now. I thought it wasn't till 57. Yes, I could have sworn it was 57. Would you like the evening standard? Oh, it's a non-smoker, isn't it? Will you have one outside in the corridor? And deceives the eye, as the saying goes. It only took him about a dozen words and two burning looks, and he was right there. But he answered to your description. He was in a non smoko and there was an evening standard on the seat beside him. He even replied to me correctly. Now you better get this straight. I'm not taking the rap for any of your stupid bungling. You're coming with me to the shop and you're going to explain to Jay what's happened. I can't possibly do that. Port Hampton's in a restricted area. It would be asking for trouble if I arrived there at midnight with no permit and a ticket that expired at Guildford. That sailor must still be on the train unless he's got a parachute. Find him, get the envelope back. I'll wait here. An impression of a cheeky little robin, hopping up the garden path from away in the distance. Coming nearer and nearer. Next stop, Guildford. Next stop, Guildford. Next stop, Guildford. Hello. Hello. Darling, is that all you can say to me? Hey. After all these weary months of silence, after all we've been to each other. I've, I've never seen her before. I've, I've never met you. Only once in the corridor. I think I begin to understand. Well, that's more than I do, and if you were trying to suggest that I flirted with you, well... I thought it meant more than just a flirtation. How could it? I, I wasn't. I, I, I wasn't even there, wherever it was. How oh, heartless you are. You're going to make me do something desperate in a minute, young woman. And I was fool enough to believe all those beautiful things you said. What things? I never said any things to you. You know very well I didn't. The woman's up the pole. She's cracking. She's late. She's canal. She's daft. I should have known better than to trust you. I should have realized that you were a... Casanova. I never asked you to trust me. And don't you call me names. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. You ought to be locked up running around accosting people. Give me back my letter. What letter? You know very well what letter. The one in which I so misguidedly poured out my feelings for you. The one you promised to carry always in your jumper next to your heart. Hey, hey, call the cop. Call the guard. Is there a doctor on the train? You don't believe me, do you, Pat? Get away, you cheeky fast cat. Hey, you brazen pussy. Hey, I'll, I'll get so... <laughs> I'll get so mad in a minute. Mother! Hey, Bertie, help! Somebody stop it! Take it away from me! All right, baby, all right. Very funny, very funny indeed. But the joke's getting stale now, so come along. Hop along, Mrs. Cassidy, hop along. You! Did you find him? Yes, but I couldn't get the envelope, and I must leave the train here. This is Guildford, isn't it? Yes, sir. Up. Ooh, where's Pat? Good night. Good night. Do you know what's in the envelope? No. Well, where is this chap? Show me in quick. Stop. Look, there he is, talking to that man. Uh, I'll get it from him at Porthampton, or else... Good luck. Over there, Edward. Oh, hello, gents, you uh, says. Well, 
What are you standing there for? <laughs> There's nothing you can pinch me for tonight. Or is there? Well, in case you've forgotten, I've been up to London with a spick and span party. We'll never forget. We listened in. Oh. You stank. Thanks very much. Well, it's very nice of you to say so. Uh, better be getting home um, the, to see Willie. Good night. What's the hurry, Bennett? Well, it's past my bedtime. Uh, sleep tight. Just a minute. Is there any reason why you shouldn't fall in with the rest of the party? <sighs> fall in with the rest? Yes. Please. Stop lively. Come on. And stay there. See, worthy contingent. Attention. Move to the left in threes. Left turn. Quick march. Sorry, old pal, old pal. You've been on leave? Spick and span. I'm proud to know you. I'm feeling a bit queer myself. I don't want the crushes to see me. You'll help me, won't you, pal? Yeah, but lay off or else they will see you. Been on the booze, old man? No, just tired, that's all. Well, who is not to believe? Oh, look at that light. Hey, put that light out. Put that light out. Good old Charlie. What's that like? Hey, hey, why are you ready? That's my teeth. That was the only area to show it behind. Striking a petty officer. Two petty officers. If either of you two idiots had obtained the information here in Portampton, this would never have happened. Now, what am I to tell Berlin? That's your lookout. I merely carried out your instructions. Whenever I see a British sailor's uniform, I shall be reminded of a fool who wasn't entitled to wear it. Blinking Ely is. Yeah, still the dirt. Don't say it. I'm thinking of something much worse. Yeah, try to knock us out, would he? Yeah. He's taking a mean advantage of him being a boxer. Oh, I'll box him. By the time I finish with Mr. Jim Bennett, the gutters of Port Hampton will be running with his blood. I could tear him apart with my bare feet. Yeah. Ooh, what the? Well, it's no good waiting here. He'd be miles away by now at the rate of knots he was doing. Well, come on, let's go and make our report. Yeah, what a report. sailor has my envelope. A stupid British sailor has the information I require. Information that is vital to Germany. Information we should have sent across tonight. If I were you, I'd take a chance. Telephone number 18 and get him to repeat his message in code, of course, and radio it to Berlin at once. Church is right. That's all there is for it. I don't suppose Church realizes that all telephone calls to a naval base are tapped. Or does he think that... visitor while I decode the message. I didn't come here, Sir I came here to find out what you fellas are trying to get up to messing about with us. Quiet! Get this message off at once. There's no time to lose. 
down to him. I'd like to see how much he's helped us. Come on. No reply yet? Huh. And you call yourself a radio expert? Yes, that's okay. How can I help it if other stations are jamming me? Have you got to carry a pigeon? Or did you stuff the lot? Oh, I've got them. They're answering. Quick, miss it, quick. Doesn't matter what you ones do, you're wasting your time. If there's much chance of winning this war, as Gurley does, are slipping through a manhole. Help me to spawn! Jerry's! Somebody come! Take him upstairs and... Uh, uh, we can dispose of the evidence tonight at my time. Go on. If you push that gun in the arm, it'll come through the front. Get up. But them stairs... Okay, you can relax now. What? My name's Godfrey, Naval Intelligence Department. Naval? I'm sorry I had to get rough just now, but just camouflage. Your turn's coming in a minute. Now listen carefully. I want you to go to Seaworthy and get hold of Lieutenant Commander Carter. But Carter, yes, I know him. He Good. Was... Now I want you to give him this note. It's vitally important if we're to save Firefly. Yes, sir. Trust me, sir. I'd do anything to put it across those bird stuffers downstairs. Good. Well, we've got the whole gang taped now. But I've got to stay here in case they try to scram before we round them up today. Well, how do I go? Across that flat roof. I can't go out into the world like this. I'll get pinched and then it'll be too late. Of course you can. Use your brains. Oh, thank you very much, sir. Anything for England, Blackpool and Pat. <laughs> Here, wait. Before you go, you've got to knock me out. Eh? Knock me out. I couldn't do that. I don't know you well enough. Look, when they come up here, they've got to think you broke away and crown me or else I'm sunk, so do it. Yeah, but it might hurt you. Well, I'll chance that. Come on, man. Get on with it. Well, you've asked for it. I said knock me out, not stroke me. Think I'm a jerry. I'm sorry, it was your idea. around the streets dressed like this, people think I'm Gandhi. My saddler, oh, blimey, I'll get the life if I'm caught wearing that. One, two, three, four, captain, at least ten years. One, two, three, lieutenant commander. Lieutenant commander, I must deliver this note. So it's not worth seven and a half years. Some lieutenant, that can do me. Two and a half months, I can manage that. Ta. They repeat it, there's no mistake. No, it's all okay. Now it's up to the Luftwaffe. Church is a long time, go and see what he's doing. All right. What happened? Go straight to the authorities. Destroy that wireless set. Okay. We're getting out of here at once. The boat's always ready. Saturday night sailor. Ah, oh, oh, you've, you've got, got him on the brain. brain. You've got no right to interfere with I'm me. I'm paid to interfere with people like you. You're not going to get out of here yet. That's all right you. you your toes. You want to get me into trouble? Get you into trouble? If I don't get back to Seaworthy, I'm going to get shot as a deserter. Oh, stop him! Stop him! Stop him! Sorry, sir. Hey, where are your manners? Knocking over a naval officer. Hand it, pajamas. Hand him wartime. Sorry, mate. S -s Sorry, sir. I'm in such a hurry. I've got to get back to sea where the arrest I'll be posted as a deserter. A deserter? <laughs> Who are you? Ordinary seaman, Jim Bennett. Jim, Jim Bennett? Who? Thank you, sir. He's promoted himself. I, I did not die, Rick. Please, Pat, try me to see 
seaworthy. Urgent. Priority. Why? I've got to see Commander Carter. I've got to give him a message from my man Godfrey. Huh? I mean, a man called Godfrey. Naval intelligence, you know, about the spies. Last night... Here, read that. The cops have got time to explain to them. Go on, quick. That'll shook up the rations a bit. Hey, the fellow in is in the car. They mustn't catch us. They won't. Don't worry. Hold tight. <laughs> scared? No, not a bit. Never been so scared in my blooming life. Commander Godfrey. He's over there with the taxi man and the rest of his gang. Everything under control, sir. Thanks for your leg, your friend. 
I've got enough information to pull the whole gang in. Why, are you dirty double-crossing? Good work, Stuart. I was wrong. You ought to be in the service. I ain't it. Hey, isn't that my rent driver you've got down there? Yes, sir. And she's skewing me hard, Trumbo. Well, in that case, you can consider yourself a sailor from now on, young fella. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Need a floor. Sorry. Where's my ring? Stop tickling me. What's the matter? I never touched you. Well, nobody did. Oh, goldfish. Oh, just like Egbert. Tell me, it is Egbert. Oh, Egbert, come back to your daddy. Pat, will you be Egbert's missus? I mean, will you be my 